Man, I didn't know they were remaking Romancing the Bone, Stone. Romancing the Stone. I mean, The Lost City is brought to us by directors Aaron and Adam Nee, and stars Sandra Bullock, Channing Tatum, and Daniel Radcliffe. A reclusive romance novelist on a book tour with her cover model gets swept up in a kidnapping attempt that lands them both in a cutthroat jungle adventure. So The Lost City is the newest star-studded shallow comedy adventure. We got Sandra Bullock, who is a romance novelist who gets kidnapped to go out into the South American jungle. I think it's South America. I'm not 100% sure, but she goes out to a jungle looking for this crown of fire or something like that. It's really expensive. Daniel Radcliffe's bad guy, kind of a generic bad guy, but you know, I kind of like the guy in the role. Either way, his bad guy has kidnapped her to bring her on this adventure because somehow she is the only person who can read these hieroglyphs that tell them where this is. And Channing Tatum comes to the rescue to save her from this villainous villain. And yes, you've heard this story before, and if you hadn't guessed yet by the two references I already made in this review, it's Romancing the Stone, but 2022 version. This time around though, instead Instead of Michael Douglas's rugged rogue, we get Channing Tatum, the cover art model of her romance novel. Yeah, it's kind of like the bumbling buffoon kind of idiot thing that Michael Douglas had going a little bit with his character in Romancing the Stone is kicked up to 11 with Tatum in this movie. But honestly, it works here. I liked Tatum in that role as kind of the bumbling buffoon. He's too pretty to be out here in the jungle doing this stuff, and he knows it, but he's giving it his all. So while the movie is definitely very reminiscent of Romancing the Stone, it does have its own differences. Now there were things about this movie I did like. There were things about this movie I really liked. The comedy overall does really work. This is a comedy adventure, so you know, the comedy needs to work, and mostly everybody did a really good job. Tatum as cover art model Alan is really good. I really enjoyed him. He's been proving himself to be a great comedian over the years. Daniel Radcliffe as our villain was really good. The guy seems like he's having a great time hamming it up as this villain. He doesn't have a whole lot to do really here. He is kind of one note, but for his part, he did a good job. I enjoyed him in the role. Also, Divine Joy Randolph as Beth was really funny. Like, any time she showed up on screen, you were in for some really good laughs. We also get a whole lot of really great cameos in this movie, from the likes of Brad Pitt, Oscar Nunez, and Patty Harrison. They all did wonderful. I really enjoyed their characters, even though some of their characters didn't really have much to do with the story. They were funny. There were some truly funny moments in this movie where I did actually laugh out loud. Brad Pitt's extended cameo in particular was pretty damn great. This guy was funny as hell in this movie. He needs more roles like this because he was awesome in it. Now you may notice that I've been talking about the characters a lot, not so much the story, and that's because there's not a whole lot of story here. I mean, there are things that happen, but none of it's really that deep. It's really just a reason to get our characters in these situations so they can kind of have these funny adventures moments. On the adventure side of things, there is some adventure in this movie, and what was here I did enjoy joy. None of it's really as big as I was hoping it would be. The movie definitely leans more to the comedy side than the adventure side, and that is one thing that I thought that something like Romancing the Stone did better. It was a much better mix of the two. But what adventure we do have is fine. I mean, it's a pretty good time. The ending of the movie, you're expecting a little bit more of a grandose thing, and something does happen, and it's okay, but it's not nearly as big as you're wanting it to be. Like I said, it leans much more into the comedy side of things than the Adventure. But hey, the comedy that we got here is actually really good. This movie had some genuinely funny as hell moments. If you haven't picked up on it yet, there is one thing in particular, or really one person in particular, I haven't talked about thus far, which seems a bit odd because this particular person and thing about this movie is kind of a big part of the film. And that would be Sandra Bullock. Miss Bullock, I do like you, and you've made some wonderful films in the past, and I think you are a really good actor. And I'm hearing that people are saying that she's really good in this movie. People are saying the chemistry between her and Tatum is really good. And honestly, I don't see it, man, because in my humble opinion, Sandra Bullock was the weakest part of this movie by a long shot. Nothing against her and her acting abilities, but she wasn't the one for this. Kathleen Turner, you are not, ma'am. She's not like god awful or anything, but compared to everyone else, she is so super dry. And I know that's supposed to be part of her character, that she's kind of prudish and dry and boring, but Jesus 
Christ, when you're that way the whole movie and everybody else is having so much fun, she just kind of sucks the fun out of the movie at times. And her chemistry with Channing Tatum is like non-existent. I've heard people saying, like I said a second ago, that they have great chemistry. Where? It's just not there. I saw zero chemistry between these two. I didn't believe anything about the relationship, regardless of what it is, between these two in this movie. Everybody else seemed like they were having a fun as hell time making this movie. She seemed like she kind of didn't even want to be there. And I laughed at pretty much every character in this movie at least one time, except for hers. Nothing she did was ever really that funny. There were a few visual gags towards the beginning concerning her that were a little bit funny, but I don't really attribute that to her. That's more just the visual gag itself. If they had picked someone else that was a better man for Channing Tatum and his style, I think it would have elevated this movie tremendously. I mean, I don't know if I would have said it was the best movie of the year, but I probably would have said, hey, you know what? This is a pretty damn fun movie. You should go see it. As it stands right now, it's just kind of like, eh, I mean, yeah, there were some laughs and it was fine, but it's just kind of okay. Overall, the movie is well made. It's got some really funny moments, and while the story is kind of throwaway, it's funny enough. It's a good enough launching pad to get us where we need to go. And while I enjoyed the characters and performances that pretty much everybody in this movie gave, Bullock just kind of took away from it all. That really sucks because, you know, she was one of the main leads. Guys, The Lost City was actually better than I expected it to be, but at the same time, not as good as it could have been. There are some truly funny moments in this movie and some great comedic performances. The story's pretty shallow, but that's not what we're really here for. If it was just that, I'd be cool with it, but Sandra Bullock, she is just woefully miscast in this one. While I had a good time with this movie, it it never quite soars, and as it stands, it's really only worth checking out on streaming. Across the street. I get that a lot of people are enjoying this movie and the performances, and I'm cool with that. I did enjoy this movie as well. There is enjoyment to be found here, but man, I, I just can't get on board with Bullock's performance here. She just wasn't the one for it. Now, that is my opinion. Let's all keep that in mind. It is my personal opinion. If you enjoyed this movie and you enjoyed the performances, I'm very happy for that. But me, no. She just kind of took away from the whole thing. So there it is, guys. My review of The Lost City. If you enjoyed and want more content like this, hit that subscribe subscribe button and help my little channel grow. If you want to help out the channel, check out my Patreon in the description below. I'm going to come a jar ahead and get some of the awesome benefits that go along with that like these guys and possibly join my top tier and become a bad motherfucker like my man Greg C and Dragon Khan. If you liked what I had to say, give me a like. If not, let me know in the comments below why. And as always, stay sexy, Lost City of D. The Red of Sage, getting you out of here. Why are you so handsome? My dad was a weatherman. Hey, whoa, she doesn't oh. need saving in there. Okay. Uh, what are you doing in there? Now, while I didn't enjoy Channing Tatum and Sandra Bullock's chemistry in this movie, Brad Pitt and Channing Tatum's chemistry in this movie was off the fucking charts. I don't mean romantic, obviously, just their on-screen chemistry. Can we get a movie with just these two guys pretty much doing exactly what they do in this movie? Just the whole thing. That would be fun fucking amazing. These two guys played off of each other wonderfully. Man, I just want that. And can I just say that Channing Tatum, dude, you are funny as hell and you keep on just coming out with the funny as hell performances. I'm kind of developing a Channing Tatum man crush. Henry Cavill, I'm sorry, but Channing Tatum, I mean, he's giving you a run for the money. He is, really. The guy's funny as hell. I'm really kind of developing a bit of a man crush here. Don't worry, though. Don't worry. You still the original, baby.